guys. Uh, so I just finished Behind the Beautiful Forevers by Catherine Boo. I picked up the book because, uh, for, well, for a couple of reasons. Um, I had heard really good things about it anyway, um, between Barnes & Noble and Goodreads and Shalfari. On top of that, uh, John Green um, said that it was one of the book's best books he had read all year, and he also recommended it in his um, If You Like This, Then You'll Like This book. Um, like gift suggestions for Christmas. So just as a basic um, plot summary, Behind the Beautiful Forevers is about a um, slum in Mumbai. It's right by the Mumbai airport. There's a video on YouTube of the slum and I'll put a link in the down bar so that you can check that out. So front cover synopsis from Pulitzer Prize winner Catherine Boo, a landmark work of narrative nonfiction that tells the dramatic and sometimes heartbreaking story of families striving towards a better life in one of the 21st century's great unequal cities. The front cover says life, death, and hope in Mumbai under city. This is not Slumdog Millionaire by any means. Um, the amount of world suck that you feel when you are reading this book is completely overwhelming. I didn't read it as quickly as I probably could. It's not that many pages. I think it's like 250, so a fairly quick read, um, but just overwhelming amount of world suck. Couldn't even... Oh, I think the perspective is really neat, um, and Catherine talks about this. Catherine, like her friends. The author talks about this in her author's note at the end, which usually I kind of skip over author's notes, but in Behind the Beautiful Forevers, I would definitely say the author's note is required. The author talks about how she's read lots of stories about India and Mumbai that were very specific. So kind of a slumdog millionaire type stories where there's this overwhelming sense of hope and like someone just climbing their way up the social casts. A tip I would give if you decide to read The Beautiful Forevers um, the story is built upon some families, um, and for me especially, when a book has like names that I'm not very familiar with, or um, really like interlaced family storylines, I think the best thing that you can do is make a chart. A sticky note, I'll write like a really easy family tree and just keep that as a reference because it's awful to be reading a book and not appreciating it because you're so lost in something as mundane as is this person this other person's mom or dad um who is this person have i totally missed the fact that they've been in the book for the last 100 pages because i confuse them with another person so definitely on a sticky note um it's always worth it i think to make like a family chart I know a lot of people were saying that about J.K. Rowling's The Casual Vacancy, that they felt like the interrelationships of the characters were just overwhelming, and I think a sticky note helps in that case, just a little tip. Favorite quote from the book. He wanted to be better than what he was made of. In Mumbai's dirty water, he wanted to be ice. He wanted to have ideals. For self-interested reasons, one of the ideals he most wanted to have was a belief in the possibility of justice. So I guess that there is a sense of hope in the book. It's in this younger generation of characters. Um, in the book, his name is Abdul. Their lives are just so inspirational, especially the children, and how even in the most difficult of situations, they manage to still be good people, despite all of the odds. That's another one of the things that the author talks about in the author note, which I highly recommend reading. She makes an emphasis on just how hard it is to be good in really tough situations. So if you're someone who does not enjoy reading stories that are either one, nonfiction, or two, if you don't really enjoy books that have very little in the way of happiness or hope, I would probably not recommend this book. But if you're kind of new to nonfiction and you want to give it a try, this is definitely a good one to start with. So just as an aside and kind of I guess is like a vlog moment, I live in a pretty small town in Texas. Uh, we have a university here, so that kind of makes up for it, but but the library here is actually pretty good. Um, and they have, I haven't found a book yet that I wanted to read that they did not have. At the same time, I hadn't seen a book that I wanted to read that wasn't already in the library. So the library is not exactly like 
the center of activity in the small town I live in. There is one book that I wanted to read that had a four person wait and it is not a new release. So each person got three weeks to read the book. I have been on the waiting list. If you do the math, it's been a while. It was for bum, 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 The Fulton and Stars by John Green. I have secretly been reading this book for a while. I listened to the first two chapters on YouTube. They're on John Green's page, which is really neat. Uh, and then like if I went to Target and my husband wanted to check out like the video games, which isn't really my thing. I would sneak over to the YA book section in Target and I would continue to read the next chapter of The Fault in Our Stars, waiting, anticipating for the library to finally have this book available. So I'm super excited to read it. Um, I know a ton of people have read this obviously, so excited for that. Alright, I hope everybody has a great day and keep reading.